Good afternoon and welcome to today's briefing at the Jerusalem Press Club. My name is Talia Dekel Fleissig. This morning, the Knesset Constitution Law and Justice Committee had held a special session to discuss sanctions imposed recently by Western governments against Israeli individuals living in the West Bank. The sanctions were imposed initially by the US government on February 1st. Canada and the UK joined later in the month and other Western governments have followed suit. Additional sanctions from the US and other countries followed with Japan joining the countries, freezing assets and barring money transfers against four individuals accused of violence against the Palestinians. The Israeli banking system was initially unclear about how to implement the sanctions uh, on bank accounts inside the country belonging to sanctions individuals, but has taken a tough approach amid concerns that the actions interpreted as violent, uh, excuse me, amid concerns that actions interpreted as uh, violating sanctions would risk having the banks removed from the international SWIFT money transfer system. Uh, our guest today is the uh, head of the Constitution Law and Justice Committee, Knesset member Simcha Rotman, a lawmaker from the Jewish Zionist Party. Hello, Mr. Rotman, and thank you very much for joining us this afternoon on a busy day. Thank you for having me, Talia. Um, maybe if you can just start by telling us a little bit about what what went on in the uh, in the session itself, and perhaps what you were hoping to achieve. So first, um, first I want to say this was a discussion about uh, Israeli democracy and sovereignty. Israel is the uh, only democratic country in this region, in the Middle East. And sadly, our friends, really friends from around the world, um, when they're imposing sanctions on Israelis, they're not really respecting nor our um, sovereignty or our democracy. And, and the hearing was about that and about the ways that the state of Israel um, is and should uh, deal with this, uh, with those events. Um, and, and the fact that uh, those sanctions are imposed on Israel when Israel fights the, the war for the entire free world is um, astonishing. And it's also astonishing. And I, uh, I said it in the beginning of the meeting but during the meeting, there were data, hard data that were, were introduced, was introduced um, by a law professor from the Hebrew U that showed that the, the claims on uh, quote unquote violent settlers, what I described as the modern blood libel, um, is uh, the data is just not there. Um, what I learned in this uh, meeting and, and I think that the data and the facts are the core uh, of every discussion, that whenever uh, a Jew, and sometimes not even a Jew, goes on the Temple Mount to visit, and there is no violent acts whatsoever, um, it is counted by the UN as settlers' violence. Um, and for me, it's a crazy... Uh, um, fact. Um, and I think that many, many countries and many, many journalists that report on data from the UN saying, oh, look, there is increase in, viol in settler violence. I hope if they're honest people, they would say that's not settler violence. And I learned that today in the hearing. Another example that was presented that um, in Malay Adumim, a, a, a city, uh, in Judea and Samaria, there was an attack by, by a terrorist that wounded a female soldier, female soldier from uh, from Karakal, which is a, a, a unit in the IDF, which uh, both um, uh, um, men and women served together, and a, a soldier, a female soldier, that was uh, um, wounded during the attack, but at the last. Uh, uh, um, really saved herself in the last minute by um, shooting at the terrorist. At, in the beginning, he wa the terrorist was wounded, and a day later, he was uh, he died. This counts as two acts of settler violence, meaning a terrorist attacked a city, a Jewish city in Judea and Samaria. A soldier defended against this attack, 
And this counts as not one because it, it, does, it didn't die on the spot. So it counts as two actions of settler violence. It enters into the statistics of the UN. And based on those statistics, Western countries like the US, like Japan, like the EU, um, says, okay, there are settlers violence, there is settler violence, we have to impose sanctions. For me, it was a, a new information that needs to be taken into account. Uh, both uh, by decision makers and by media, um, um, when when describing this. Now, the 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 uh, another issue that was presented was presented in the hearing that the sanctions not only did not uh, um, change for the good the the amount of reported violence, vice versa, it went exactly the other way on the on until the sanctions were imposed on uh, um um Jews living in Judea and Samaria under the false pretense of quote unquote settler violence there were declining in decline in the reports on settler violence and after the sanctions there was a rise now once you understand that the the main reason of those reports of those false reports is to impose other sanctions, you understand that it has nothing to do with the reality on the ground. It is a way to fight Israel. And what I, I hoped to achieve from the hearing, beside the fact that the entire, almost entire Knesset, coalition and opposition together, stood and said very loud and clear, it doesn't matter what uh, you think about uh, uh, a certain individual, if you agree with him or not, if he's in with with your uh, political affiliation or not, those sanctions are hurting Israeli sovereignty, the state of Israel, and that also was uh, proved in data in the hearing, does more than any other country in the world to fight violence that is based on uh, ideology, if you would want, and and. And the, the, the other countries of the world need to respect Israeli democratic and Jewish attributes and respect the fact that Israel has a working justice system that not only deals with any actions of uh, violence, but also deals with it more than the way other countries are dealing with violence based on ideology or based on ethnicity in their own territories. And I think it's not a coincidence that the same governments that don't do enough to deal with violent acts against Jews in their own territory are the ones who are imposing sanctions only on Jews in Israel based on the, the modern blood libel, which is settler violence. And another information some of the actions, the, the, the sanctions, the sanctioned people and organizations that came to the committee today has nothing to do with settlers or with violence. They don't live in Judea and Samaria. They did not act in Judea and Samaria, and they were not violent. Um, uh, the major example is an organization called Tzav Teisha, um, Order Number 9, and they protested peacefully against the transfer the transfer of aid to Hamas. They are not against aid to Gaza. They, they are against aid to the Hamas, something that any moral person is supposed to be with. And they were sanctions, sanctioned just because someone thought that um, it's a good idea to sanction a civil organization, uh, a civil society organization in Israel because of its views, it's nothing to do. The people who were sanctioned are not even living in Judea and Samaria. Does not that it justify anything, but not not. Uh, uh, but that so that was the the major the main um, reason for the the hearing and to coordinate the government actions in response to uh, those actions. And we learned also that many of the countries that try to impose sanctions on quote unquote settler violence a did not does not impose do not impose sanctions on actual terrorists we have soldiers 
um, that are under sanctions, and reserve units that are fighting in Gaza, fighting terror for the entire world, and they're under sanctions. In the meantime, the Houthi, who, which are a threat to the world uh, uh, safety and for Israel, are not under the sanctions. So something is deeply wrong with and with the imposing with the the countries who impose sanctions in that way. So I want to I do want to get to Israel's um, position vis-a-vis -vis the other the the uh, allies themselves and also in the context of the war. But I but just finishing up your point on Israel dealing with uh, things on its own as a sovereign nation with its independent judiciary and of course all that's involved. The examples that you brought, uh, which are obviously problematic in and of themselves, whether it's uh, peaceful protesting or uh, you know the, the miscalculation when counting what's what's considered violence against Palestinians and what's in the context of uh, military operations, neutralizing terrorists, that's one thing aside, but we can't ignore the fact that there are pictures that come out uh, that we see of violent demonstrations against um, against aid coming into Gaza. There was there is one infamous incident in which it happened on camera. Uh, there, there are other examples of violence that we see. Um, is the Israeli, are the Israeli authorities taking care of these uh, incidents when they do happen? Um, and is Israel making the world aware of, of that action? Um, if, if that is the argument that we're capable of dealing with things by ourselves. So first, the answer, and it was also demonstrated in the data presented uh, again by Dr. Uh, Volfovich from the Hebrew in the committee. Um, and the data is available if you want to, any, anyone who will want to get the, it's on the committee website and we can, we will happily share it. Um, that A, the state of Israel deal with those kind of crimes, which are, again, there are not a lot of them. It's, 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 uh, it's really, um, the vast majority of their reported uh, events are are non-existent. It's 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 a lie. It's not, not nothing to deal with because there are no crime. There are no crimes on this. But whatever it it is true, the amount of uh, uh, the the ratio of opening investigation or indictments or even punishment in Israel is again way better than any other country dealing dealing with violent crimes. Um, again, based on ideology or based on hate crimes. So the state of Israel not only deals with it, deals with it way more than any other country. Um, but again, it's about the same what we experience in uh, the war in Gaza. The, the ratio between civilians and combatants in Israel fighting Gaza is better than any other nation on the face of the earth. And still, we are getting... The, again, the modern equivalent of the blood libel that Israel is hurting civilians. It's not true. It's not true when when you look at the data. It does, it's not true in and the actions um, that uh, were violent. First, people were arrested because of it, but it has, has nothing to do with this organization, Order Number Nine, who has nothing to do Tzavtesha, who has nothing to do with those events. So you see something on the on the on the media. You impose sanction on someone who has nothing to do with it, and now let's uh, let's try to solve the problems. That's not a way to respect other countries' sovereignty. Just imagine what would happen if we, if someone in Israel would see a, 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 a violent demonstration in a college campus in uh, Colombia or in Harvard or in Yale, and then Israel will impose sanction and try to hurt someone from. A totally different university that has no protests. <laughs> so that's the equivalent of what we're trying to deal with. So I understand that um, that there were several ambassadors uh, invited to the uh, session. Uh, were any of them in, in attendance? Has there been some sort of response? So um, the, the the ambassadors did not uh, did not come. Um, I can understand why because it's not uh, it's not an easy. Uh, uh, thing to do as an ambassador. Uh, I I hope, and that's why I got the hearing uh, translated in real time. I hope that um, they, the fact that they knew about this event and were invited to, uh, made them listen to the data and to the to the un the unity of the Jewish people of, and of the Knesset members against those sanctions 
and the way the Israeli public and Israeli elected officials look at this. I have to say, one of the main uh, problems is that when you read the wording of the sanctions by the um, the um, the American administration, the U.S. administration, it's basically sanctioning anyone who is trying to do something or say something or operate or or, or do something against the two-state solution um, and against the Palestinian state. Now, the Knesset two weeks ago adopted, with the support of, uh, all, of about eighty Knesset members, a resolution saying no to Palestinian state. So, me, so in reality, what's happening is, is that the U.S. administration says if you are the vast majority of the public in Israel or the elected officials, be aware that we will might sanction you. So that's not a way to treat an ally. I have to say that's not a way to treat. Uh, uh, a democratic country who made up its mind and sees a Palestinian state or the two-state solution, especially in the version that the U.S. administration is trying to push forward as a as an imminent danger to the safety of Israel and to the safety of the region, the safety of the world, we I, we, I hope and I call on the American administration to respect Israel's sovereignty and democracy. I... Your your position is very clear, but isn't holding the the uh, session nonetheless um, problematic timing, given the fact that we are trying to continue to maintain uh, or or even save uh, world support in in this just war that Israel is 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 uh, is continuing to carry out? Um, I think that uh, having the, this hearing um, is crucial to exactly what you said, because if uh, we are having a fight against evil forces that the world has never seen and um, and needs to be uh, taken care of. And the West is next. And while Israel is in this fight, some of our friends, based on false data, um, are prosecuting our reserve soldiers, our, uh, our uh, uh, citizens. And we have to make them aware that what they're doing is not helping. Some of them, I, ho I, I hope some of them are operating from good intentions based on lies and information that they're getting from people. Um, but we need to tell them loud and clear what you're doing is, is hurting us. And what you're doing is not helping even to achieve what you're trying to achieve. Again, information that was presented showed that applying sanctions on even according to the guidelines of the Department of Homeland Security is not the way to deal with violent crimes. So so they are counterproductive and it's good that um, we as the Knesset, as the legislator of Israel, will say loud and clear, this is against us. We see it, we are united. Don't try to separate us. Don't try to sanction some of our people, some of our reserve units um, we are in the war, we are fighting the war against evil for you. The least that you can do is not bother us. Uh, what does what holding the hearing uh, say about perhaps, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, your party or your personal view on the way that the Israeli diplomatic echelon is handling this situation? I mean, it's, 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 Certainly, there are things going behind the scenes, uh, you know, uh, behind closed doors between uh, between the U.S. administration and between uh, Israel's foreign ministry, the prime minister, specifically on this topic. Of course, the things that are going well, we don't we don't have we don't need to uh, talk about. But the, the the in reality, we know that not all the systems are um, operating in full speed on this. Uh, we know that, and I don't even blame them because we're in a war, in time of war, and they're extremely busy with other pressing matters. And that's my job as a Knesset member, member, and my colleagues also who wanted this hearing, coalition and opposition alike, is to tell the executive branch, especially ex exactly that, this is not a side issue. This is hurting Israeli sovereignty and democracy. And the, and you need to take care of it. So um, so um, the government, the ministers has, uh, of course, and every person has limited capacity 
in the issues he can take care of. But that's why the executive is big. That's why there are a lot of departments. That's why they can do, they can multitask. And our demand is to add this to the task basket with high priority. And, and this uh, demand came loud and clear from all sides of the Knesset. Uh, thank you for that. And I think that if, if you're already on the line, we will maybe use this opportunity to ask you a question about the war itself. We're now well into its 11th month, um, un unfortunately approaching, you know, a year to uh, to uh, the the atrocities of October 7th. Um, do you have any thoughts moving forward? What the what the how the next few months will play out? Uh, Israelis are very, very, very tense, uh, to say the least, about an perhaps an imminent attack uh, coming from the north? Is there something that you can say to address those concerns or perhaps you know the larger end game uh, on the defense side for Israel? Um, for, of course, data regarding the, the military uh, actions and, and the responses, of course, I'm, uh, I will not uh, speak uh, um, on this forum, but, uh, but I can say what we see on the ground in Gaza, um, I think that um, the state of Israel um, is eliminating Hamas forces in Gaza and outside of Gaza, and um, and gives an example to what happens if you are um, um, threatening Israeli security. Um, I um, I am sure that uh, our enemies sees what happened there and and um, maybe uh, rethinking if it's a good idea to start a war with Israel. Um, it should be, um, we should continue this with greater force all the time and apply more and more pressure um, on, uh, and, and it's not pressure on Hamas, it's uh, the, the campaign to destroy Hamas, and that's uh, the only way we will see uh, the hostages returning home once uh, once uh, the Hamas loses any hope to survive as a ruling power in Gaza, then people will see and um, and make their own calculation how to save themselves and their families by giving information and releasing the the hostages that they hold um, um, any operative of Hamas or Islamic Jihad that holds uh, um, hostages and know something about hostages will have the incentive to come forward um, um, to Israel. Um, and and in the north and in Iranian front, um, I know that the security forces of Israel are ready to uh, defend, but also to attack if needed. If needed, we know that in Lebanon, Lebanon it's needed, so we are attacking uh, threats that we see there. And what happened in Yemen, I hope also sends the right kind of message that nowhere is too far when Israel needs to defend its border. Okay, very clear. Thank you very much, uh, Knesset member Simcha Rotman, for your time. And uh, as always, I hope that our next conversation will be in better circumstances uh, for now. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, and thank you to my colleagues, uh, Matthias Sakal and uh, Jonathan Beck, for facilitating this call. Bye, everybody.